As Miss Crichton's manager, there is something I feel I must tell you. I am breaking my promise to her by saying this. Ray, please. No, no, it's too late. You can't stop me now. But Miss Crichton does not agree with me that the happiness and relaxation her skill can bring to people longing for a brief escape from the grimness of today is the best sort of war work she can do. <laughs> so you have heard her play for the last time. She is giving up her music for the duration. She is determined to do something more directly connected with the war effort. I think you will feel as I do about her decision. And if by your applause you can do anything to make her change her mind... Oh, careful, please. You're flattening my hair. I was careful. Flatten it much more. Over there, please. Oh, I see you've crossed out Crichton and put Campbell. Yes, Crichton's my stage name. Oh, you on the stage? Oh, I'm awfully keen about those fellows. Now, what are they called? Don't tell me. Oh, they always make me laugh. <laughs> Flanagan and Allen. Have you ever done a show with them? No, I play the piano. Oh. Well, piano playing won't be much help in the RAF. Still, you'll learn a useful trade. In that cubicle, please. What I really wanted to do is to drive a colonel. Take your things off, please. Well, I'm afraid we don't have colonels in the West. Oh, well, a wing commander, then. Or a vice marshal or something. What we really need at the moment are cooks. Cooks? Say 99. Hmm? Oh, 99. But do tell me why 99? I mean, why not 35 or 100? We prefer 99. You know, I'm so thrilled to be here. It isn't Take really off, so... Please. Shumpy a moment. Is this the young lady? I see you had scarlet fever. When was that? Oh, ages ago. I was about 14, I think. Mm-hmm. Sorry, my dear. Afraid we can't use you. What do you mean? Why can't you use me? There's nothing the matter with me, is there? Now, now, take it easy. RAF demands a high standard of health, that's all. But I am healthy, aren't I? If I'm not... What's the matter with me? Tell me, please. Can't do that against regulations. Better have a word with your own M.O. You have been a time. I've worked out all the details of the answer to her while I was waiting. Well, what's the verdict? Verdict? Don't be so dramatic. Come on. I'm rather pleased. I'm rather pleased with the way I've worked this out. At first Malta, in North Africa, finishing up in Naples about January. Back here next June, by which time I shall have fixed the Albert Hall. Oh, do listen. I am. It sounds lovely. Good. Then I'll tell them you'll agree. No, Ray. I say, there's nothing the matter, is there? I mean, you didn't say you have to stay in bed or anything. Bed, please. What happened to you, anything smaller? Have you any change? Anyone would think I was the Royal Mint or the Bank of England. <laughs> come on, come on. I'm sorry. Uh, two to Piccadilly, please. Mm. Some people take half an hour to make up their minds. Don't know whether they want to get a Patney Common or the Corner House. Well, what did the specialist say? Why mustn't I book the tour? I'm going to die. Look at mate. Oh, I can't get through you. You ain't made a vapor, you know. Uh, I'm sure there's a mistake. Doctors aren't always right to know. And you're so healthy. That's what I thought. But it seems I've had a creaky heart ever since I had scarlet fever as a kid. And those faints I've been throwing lately, well, they weren't just nerves or overtiredness as we thought. They were, well, they were it. But doctors don't tell people when they're going to When they're going to die, I made him. I said to him, how would you like to spend your last few months in some dreary nursing home, buoyed up with false hopes? If I've only got a short time, tell me and... I'll enjoy every moment while it lasts. Enjoy it? Yes, Ray. I want to be in life for the little time that's left, not outside watching it, as I always have. For so many years, it's been practice, practice, mm. practice, all you saw to that. Concerts, endless train journeys. Well, it's all over now. I'm going out into the sunshine. I, I want to walk in the wind and watch the waves breaking against the Cornish rocks. I want to try and catch up with some of the things I've missed. There are so many of them, Ray, and the time isn't on my side. Very nice. And the view is lovely. Oh, yes.
Mrs. Hume's quite one of our best attractions. Far superior to the one they have at the Grand. Tell me, are the people here amusing? Young, I mean. Well, uh, most of our residents are permanent, Miss Campbell. Elderly persons. But we have some young ones to keep us lively. You'll get plenty of refined fun. Oh, you won't mind dressing for dinner. We feel it's good for morale. Don't worry. This is going to be morale's big night. <laughs> Clay. Roast duck again, Danny. Second time this week. Albert, this sugar's down by a good half inch. That's right. I'd be making fudge. Just leaving the table, you know it's bad for your stomach. <laughs> Only one roast duck left. <laughs> so one of you have to have cabbie and that's boiled cod. Yeah. My brother says he'll have the roast duck. Yeah. So I said you've got the wrong idea about me. I'm a business girl on holiday. I don't do those sort of things. Even if you are a fairy pilot with some real silk stockings. How many pairs did you get? like that and in wartime too. Oh, stop beeping. The pity meant to go round. Well. Card and diplomatic pudding. Oh, but it's... No, no, it's all off. What is diplomatic pudding, lad? Bread and marge and my jam ration on top. Well, it wouldn't do thee much harm to have a good belly full of it. Good gracious me. <laughs> when I were a lad, I'd have had good cooking pants for half young fella gets away with. Do you mind if I sit down? No, of course not. Hey. It's nice to see a human face in these parts. They call me Tom Tanner. I'm a Yorkshireman. I'd never have guessed it. I'm Lisa Campbell. I saw you come into the room, and I said to myself, now there's a lass who's neither a gold digger nor a front, but we're a fair treat. Thanks for including me out of the front. But how do you know I'm not a gold digger? I know women. Ladies, man? Nay. Hey. I've only known one woman all my life that counted. But I can judge to this be her. Your wife? Aye, ah, nearly 40 years we had together. Any children? Nay, and I'm afraid my love-making days are over. But I still like to see it going on. <laughs> Maybe that's why I'm a bit soft where young'uns are concerned. On holiday? Yes. I'd hoped it was going to be the most wonderful holiday of my life. But a duke steals all my mind. Shapes weird and strange assail me. Weird and strange is right. And you'll have more doubts when you see him out in Stiff's Alley. Stiff's Alley? Aye, oh, that's what I call lounge out yonder. <laughs> with them all stretched out like a lot of mummies in a row. Hey, pop them down there, lad. Are you sure they're four star? Four star, sir. <laughs> You have half a dozen of those and you'll see the Milky Way. Tell me, when are you going back? Retired seven years ago. Me and Ellie came home to rest ourselves. You must be lonely without her. Ah, she were a grand lass. Great big, beautiful blue eyes she had. And they were that honest. I never could abide to tell Ella a whopper. She were a grand lass. Tell me, are you on holiday? Nay, I'm a working man again. Government dragged me out at cupboard when the war started. I'm down here to pep up mining and open up this few shafts and the like. But I'm telling you, tale of my life, aren't I? What about you? Let's see. British subject, age 23. Well, 24. No family, no husband, no plans. Hmm. What do you do for a living? I play the piano a bit. At least I used to. I've given it up now. This is the first real holiday I've had for years, and I'm going to enjoy every minute of it. Yeah, we'll take a sip at this, lass. Things won't all seem so gloomy, then. Gloomy? What do you mean? Well, you're not happy, I know that. But I'll not pry. It wouldn't be a man by any chance, then. No. And thanks for not prying. Hmm. Don't give it a thought, lass. Maybe it's your health. Why? I haven't been very well, but I'm all right now, convalescing. Well, you couldn't pick a better spot. Some of the finest scenery in England, and some grand walks. It's a bit hilly for walking, isn't it? 
I wonder if I could hire a car. Mm, yeah, I'm afraid not in wartime. But if you're not keen on walking, reckon I know the very thing. Give you a hand. Mm -hmm. Give me both hands. I don't believe you're in danger at all. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> you a strong, muscular girl? No. Thank heavens for that. What's your name? Melissa. Mine's Kit. How'd you do? Well, just hanging on. Right to get toes in. What were you looking for? Gull's eggs? No. Molly. Molly? Molybdenum. Mm -hmm. uh, if she's a girl, I think she is. She's a rare piece. Are you a geologist or something? <laughs> no, not exactly. Like to see where I found her? Yes. You see that hole in the cliff? That's the ventilation shaft of a derelict mine. That's where I came out. Very interesting, but how did you get in? Found that old mine shaft over there. You walked all that way underground. Weren't you afraid of the dark? Yes, I was. I shunned it again. Tell me, what are you doing down here? Are you on leave? No. Oh. Mm -hmm. Simple, but expensive. You're staying at the big hotel, I take it. Mm, I arrived last night. Then I bags you. I've always wanted a brunette with your kind of eyes, but I only seem to appeal to full-blown blondes. Life's like that. I'm partial to blunt, rugged men, but I usually find myself saddled with old world charmers. Well, things get together. With my ruggedness and your eyes, we could go places. <laughs> I think I know the sort of places you have in mind. Now, don't go away. I feel safer away from the edge. <laughs> if you come back, I'll use my other technique. The hole. An old world charmer, how's that? Terrible. It's not your style. How can I get you fixed in my mind if you keep on leaping about? I didn't ask you to get me fixed in your mind or anywhere else. Oh, yes, you did. Every line of you. You're going straight into my box of special memories. You won't find it crowded there, and I'll often bring you out. I thought only old people worried about memories. <laughs> Nino, I'll be 90 come muck spreading. You debunk everything, don't you? Mm, it's my shallow nature. Anyway, life is far too short to be taken seriously. Yes. 
Of course, what I really need is the influence of a good woman. Are you a good woman? I'm a very hungry one. And if I don't get back soon, everything on the menu will be off. Uh, I'll see you tomorrow at 11 sharp. But we haven't made a date. I'm making one now, and I like my women to be on time. You are the most self-satisfied, infuriating, conceited man I've ever met. All right. 11 o'clock. Sharp. by the Germans at 15 million killed, wounded, and missed. Oh, nothing exciting. Turn it off, Angus. Any activity over this country during the day. One can't think of war all the time. That's right. You look after yourself. Don't want nervous breakdown. Been having fun and games, lass? Well, games, anyhow. Makes my blood boil when I hear what our gallant allies are doing, while other people sit down and do nothing at all. Hmm? Uh, the young men, I mean. That frightful kit, something or other, for instance. Fellow who knocks about fishing and plays with uh, bits of rock, hmm? And bits of girls. As a matter of fact, he's got a new one. What, rock? No, girl. Actress. She had a cigarette stuck in her mouth and trousers on. Give me a woman in a skirt every day. Aye, they are more handy, like. No bed. He met her off the London train. You should see the way they greeted each other. Uh, not very obvious, but uh, I could guess. He doesn't appeal to me. I think he's charming. I picked him up on the cliff this morning. Ah, happen he'll be added new to his collection, eh? Happen he won't. In my own small way, I'm quite a collector myself. Good night, everybody. Good, Good night, my dear. I knew exactly what kind she was when she came into the dining room last night. Having no heart. Over there, miss. Thank you. <laughs> Tom, what on earth's all this? You said last night you'd given up piano playing. Well, I don't believe it. Musicians can't do that. Not exactly a concert grand, but it'll do for your strumming. But tuning it, who taught you to do that? I come from Huddersfield, and we fancy ourselves there a bit in music line, love. <laughs> I don't know why you should take all this trouble over me. Eh, yeah, well, I'm a lonely man, and I like young folk. But when you get to my age, it's nice being mixed up a bit in their affairs. Thank you, Tom. You're sweet. No, I wonder they don't put me on points. <laughs> what time are you meeting him? Hmm? Young lad, Kit Firth. But I never said I... <laughs> oh, well. Eleven o'clock. I wouldn't keep him waiting. He's going to do the running this time. I'm not sure he's kind of lad that runs. What's your name? Mine's Kit. You're going straight into my box of special memories.
I've come to meet the most enchanting girl. Oh, really? Well, I'm looking frightful this morning. I put my oldest sunsuit on. <laughs> Doesn't suit me a bit, does it? No, not a bit. <laughs> Miss Campbell be any chance, would you? Neat brunette with the donkey? I no, I wouldn't be looking for her. No, I thought perhaps not. And there's no need for you to go to summer house, young man. Eh? No, none at all. I've hardly started it yet. So you write music. You play like an angel. I knew there was something about you. Well, do go on, or am I stopping the inspiration? On the contrary, you're part of it. Oh. Well, in a way. You see, I got the idea on the headland yesterday. Listen. I've got it. Seagulls. And the waves breaking on the cliffs. And this to express some of the emotions I felt at the time. Mm -hmm. What sort of emotions? If I could express them in words, I wouldn't have to write music. You know, it's, it's rather exciting, our meeting leading to something like that. You're not famous, are you? I mean, you don't have Lissa Campbell written up in Piccadilly and flaming lights, are you? Not in the blackout and never in Piccadilly. Actually, I call myself Felicity Crichton. I don't suppose you've ever heard of me. But I have. Many of the time I've switched you off on the radio. <laughs> Please keep it to yourself. I'd like this to be a real holiday. All right. Come on. I've got a friend I want you to meet. An actress who wears trousers and always has a cigarette in her mouth? What little bird been whispering in your ear? It wasn't a little bird. It was an old vulture. <laughs> Pretty, ain't her? Don't be no use. Why? We'll be all set for a rare wet summer. I don't seem right to take folks' money and no roof over their heads. Now, we got a boat boat. Boat out. That's right. Oh, 300 it would. Thanks, but I'll take my chance here. Now, come on, boys. This job's life and death to me, so put your backs into it, please. Hey, Judy. I've got a girl I want you to meet. Really, Kit, I'm too busy to be bothered with your girls now. You'll like this one. She's different. Yes, sir, this is Judy Martin. This is Sir Campbell. How do you do? Hello. Give me a light. Hi. You are different. Most of his bits of nonsense turn out to be... Bits of nonsense? 200% female. Alive from the neck down. Just look Shut kidding. up. Where's that light? Thanks. As a matter of fact, I'm a bit surprised about you. What did you expect? Well, I... I bet you heard that Kit and I were having a violent affair. Now, look here. Oh, be quiet, Kit. Yes, I did. We've known each other since we were kids. Live next door. I'm probably the only girl in the world he hasn't fallen in love with. Now, if you quite finished carving me up, do you think we could talk about something else? Well, as a topic, you are somewhat exhausted. Mm. Tell me about all this. Well, my story is it was once a Roman amphitheater. Nero used to fire watch here when he wasn't fiddling. 
I came across it a few months ago and decided to stage some open air plays. But that's a wonderful idea. That's what I thought. Cornwall full of visitors, not too many counter attractions. <laughs> I thought it was a cinch. Well, isn't it? Oh, too many snags. Can't get any actors. If you do, you have to pay them to the nose. Shortage of labor to get the place poshed up. Shortage of cash to get it started at all. Talking of cash, you heard from Parkinson? Uh-huh. He's backed out. Oh, dear, that's torn it. I was relying on his 300. Wait a minute. I've got an idea. Blackmail. What? Yeah, I'm not kidding. Get the victim all lined up. Come on. He lives in your part of the world. Now, listen, my lad. You can't put that over on me. I've had them all try. Prospectors with salted gold mines. Company promoters who wanted to do me out at Brassard earned. But, Mr. Tanner, as a representative of the ministry, I must insist. I'm only... I know what you are, but I'm here to get stuff out at mines, not fill in forms. I'm here to do away with bottlenecks. And that's what you are, my lad, a bottleneck. All I ask is that you fill in and return the necessary departmental forms. And all I ask is to be left alone to get on with job I'm here for. So you can go back to Whitehall and tell them to stop pestering me with bits of paper. Or they can take job and give it to somebody else. And don't have so much starch in your diet. <laughs> Hello, you two. Just in time for a cocktail. Come on. Well, what about... It's all right, go on. Judy! All right, kid, I'm coming. Sit there, there, lass. We can't stay. Kit's on his way to do a spot of blackmail. Yeah, you're a great help. He's my victim. Eh? What's I, this? I want to introduce you to an attractive little piece I picked up yesterday. Molybdenum? Mm -hmm. Did you say you picked this up around here? Uh, I didn't say where I picked it up. You're going to pay me 300 quid to tell you that. You're duff. It's a derelict property that can be reopened. Now, I know Molly. I've mined it before. And by the way, there's a very rich bone. Well, if what you say is right, information's worth thousands, not hundreds. Why offer it at a bargain price? He wants the money to back an open-air theater. Theater? Has nobody told you where it was? Everybody. Well, I'm sorry we can't do business. Hey, hold on. What about my lived in them? Well, leave it where it is. What, with war industries crying out for stuff? Aren't you interested in country? <laughs> I'm interested in 300 pounds. Oh, there you are. Give me a light, someone. Judy, I'd like you to meet Tom Tanner. Tom, this is Judy Martin. Hello. Let's try an old-fashioned match. Thanks. <laughs> You're trying to hypnotize me. Sorry for staring, lass. But you've got eyes just like someone I used to know. Never thought I'd see the like of them again. Tom, Judy's running this open-air theater Kit wants the money for. What's proposition? It's an old amphitheater overlooking the sea. I was putting on the Tempest. What's gone wrong? Oh, back. I backed out. And you need 300 quid to get venture started. Well, I might get by on this. Nay, hey, I'll have no to do with you, Sparing. I'll let you have 300. But I'll want agreement, mind, and 5% on gross takings. It's all got to be business-like. I'm a hard man to deal with. All right, but isn't 5% a bit steep? You get place for note. You don't have to pay Shakespeare. I have to pay the actors. You don't have to buy scenery. No, but the costumes cost something. Look here, 4%? Four and a half. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> but don't expect me to take personal interest. I'm a busy man. I've too much to do to fiddle about with theatres. Now, come on, my lads. Put the back seat to it. Eve. Come on. That'll do for now, that's champion. Now, you've earned a good rest. Back on job in five minutes. at all, right? I thought you looked a bit worried and my eyes were a bit clouded like. Oh, nonsense. Look, there's Lissa. He used to go to kids' water sports when he was at school. None of the other kids were patch on him. 
Oh, well, this isn't getting us anywhere. How much do you think I should pay for Trinculo? Wake up, Trinculo, how much? Eh? Oh, get a good man, that's all. We want naught but best. Well, I'll just see about men in yon bit of balustrade, and then I'm off to mine. Okay. Exactly confiding, are you? I mean, I don't know anything about you, where you come from, where you're going to. Look at old Tom up there. He fancies himself as the big theater man. Yeah. yeah, it's amazing how he parted with his dough. One look at Judy and wham, 300 quid. I think it's because she reminds him of his wife. Hmm? He feels she's the sort of daughter he might have had. Gosh, look at the sky. Isn't it lovely? You like beautiful things. Mm hmm. And people. It's funny in an engineer, this feeling for beauty, especially in mines. You're underground most of the time, what? missing it all. I'm not now. I'd have thought with the war on that engineers... Now, uh, please, couldn't we forget the war? this week. You must be in love. Yeah, that fish is going to be very tasty with all that delicious cigarette ash dropping in it. Well, give me another. You know, one of these days, you pretty little thing, you're actually going to buy a package yourself. One of these days, you ugly mug, you're going to get that thing to work. How about laying the dinner? Okay. Haven't you? Pass the fish slice. Thank you. Jeffrey, don't mash them. Yes, lots and lots of this. Do you mind? Why should I? She might one day. Still Miss Wright, aren't you? Mind you don't break anything. Oh, what? I'm getting quite expert. Oh, at last. Caught my wrist on that nail. Tied up for you. Oh, it's nothing. It's only a scratch. I'll get some plaster tomorrow. Not very hygienic, but it'll do. It doesn't matter. Oh, still. I told you to be careful. Well, look, I've got to get used to going around the dark, haven't I? Have you told us, sir? No. I'm not going to. Hmm. Well, let's eat. I'm hungry. You've gone to a frazzle. One or two? One. You better have two. You know, Ruth is not like your other girls. She's a person. She's got her life to lead. I'm not stopping her. Aren't you? You know, the biggest mistake of my life was bailing out of that plane. Wish to God I'd had the sense to crash with it. Don't be a fool. You know you don't mean that. Once it's happened, it'll only be a matter of time. It's getting used to the idea. Do you think I want to spend the rest of my life a blind man? Do you think I'm looking forward to it? Life will still be worth living, kid. The trouble with you is you'll keep up this big act. Life and soul of a party, never a dull moment. You slump right back with a bang. Oh, come on. All 
Sorry, Judy. I have no right to take it out on you. Okay. This is the last taste of supper you get out of me. Huh? Next time you can poison yourself with bread and fish paste. <laughs> Judy, you don't have to worry about Lissa. I'll see if she doesn't get hurt. You drop the pin in the well, and as it sinks, you make a wish. But suppose you know the one thing that you really want, you can't have. A wish for a miracle. Perhaps you'll get it in the end. Kid, would you like to be able to see into the future to know what's going to happen? No. <laughs> no, thank you very much. You going to wish? Hmm. What have I got to lose? Kit. Well, that was very nice. Shall we go? Now look here. Then let's dissect the thing. Come on. See that circle of stones? I know as the Merry Maiden. Supposed to be village lasses who were turned in the stone because they were caught dancing on a Sunday. Very interesting. Cornwall's full of quaint conceits. Now, further along the road here, Kit, we'll have... let's forget about the folklore and talk about us. What happened? After we kissed, why did everything change so suddenly? Got scared. Of what? Falling in love with you. Would that be such a tragedy? <laughs> well, it might be a bore for both of us. I'm an antisocial type, but I, I don't like responsibilities and obligations. I, I don't want to be in love. Or, I don't want anybody to be in love with me. I'm all for living like the Miller of D. Who? The Miller of D. He had a theme song. I care for nobody, no, not I. And nobody cares for me. <laughs> Sorry, to say. Please try to understand. Today, I want to kiss you like hell. But six months from now, it might be hell to have to. Six months from now, I shan't be here to be kissed. Hmm? Oh, you mean you'll do the walking out? Yes. I'll do the walking out. <laughs> hey, it's Bam! Oh, no, Cock, this is no time to stage a sit-down strike. Uh. Oh, Spam must have been in the, in the tourist racket. This is a spot everybody stops to see. This is known as the bargaining stone. In the old days, whenever farmers did a deal, selling cattle or whatnot, they used to shake hands through that hole to seal the bargain. Kit, hmm? let us make a bargain. A bargain? Mm-hmm. To walk out on each other. When the time comes. Well, how long are you going to be here? I don't know. Three months, perhaps. Okay. Three months. No strings, no comebacks. No questions. No answers. No regrets. We agree never to intrude upon each other's private self. To have all the fun in the world and leave it at that. To be very nice in the Liz of D. Judy, I'm looking for Kit. Why tell me? I haven't got him hidden anywhere. No, come, come, lass. Nerves, edginess. Better give it a rest. Oh, I'm sorry, Tom. I am edgy. Please give me a cigarette. I don't know where I put mine. Thank you. All right, everybody, relax for ten minutes. Please don't be late. Okay, Judy. We'll be there. And you've no idea where Kit is. Every idea. Fine, let's you've got Kit. Now, Judy, you mustn't let that get you down. Get me down? Why should it? Nothing to do with me if he wants to go traipsing over the countryside. I'm only worried for Lissa. 
cold. She may be taking him seriously. They sometimes do. Aye. Kit's not the serious kind. There's only unhappiness for her if she goes on. You don't think it's different this time that he might want to marry her? No. No! Oh, he may fool around with girls and lead them on, up to a point. But there's one thing I know. He'll never marry Lissa, or any of them. Do you like whipping? Whopping? Whipping. It's the local term for catching mackerel on a string. You mean for not catching mackerel on a string? You want to go back? No. I'm perfectly happy. I wish time would stop. Mm. But it won't. Would you like to go through Spaniard's Cave? Do you mean the tunnel you told me about under the point? I'm going to do it in calm weather. Beautifully clear today. You can even see the sillies. Can you still get there? Hmm? The sillies? Playing that every day. I'd like to go there sometime. They're coming back from a raid. There are two missing. One really hasn't much right to be happy. You're going to take that attitude. You may as well live in a cell and wear a hair shirt for the rest of the world. Don't see your point. Kit, mm -hmm. why aren't you in something? Well, I know you must have a very good reason, oh, but... Here we go again. You don't seem to care what people say about you. I do. I want to be able to say, he's not like that. And I can't. Loyal little woman. You always take refuge in sarcasm when one wants to talk about anything that really matters. I care for nobody. No, not I. And nobody cares for me. I'm sorry. I forgot. Yes, I, I put your hat. Can you stay there now? In the silly? Yes, I've got the keys to a cottage outside Tresca. Not mine, but I can use it. Furnished? Oh, it's got bed. And chairs and teacups and all that. Food? In the farmhouse nearby. It's very pretty. Flowers must be lovely now. There must be cabbages these days. Well, there's something about cabbages, too. Is it? Do you mean this? Mm hmm. When? Whenever you say. Tomorrow? Mm hmm. Mr. Bert? Yeah? Mr. T -t -t Tanner wants he up at m m mine. What for? D -d didn't tell I. Just said it were or, or, or urgent. M important. Why don't you mind your own b -b 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 business? That's right. <laughs> but do you mind if we go along? We? Oui? Well, give me moral support. Get bungies inside, will you? Come in. Oh, there you are, lad. Hello, Lizzie. I Hello, expect Tom. to find you mumbling a last fun message. Sit there down, lass. Yeah. I've a fun message, but it's not me last by any manner, I mean. Yeah. It's a great good news for thee, lad. Tell me quick, how much? Well, it's not exactly a matter of brass, though you'll get your share of that. It's more a thing of satisfaction. We're going ahead to mine my lib denim. Plans drawn up, lads to do job engaged. Within a week, we'll be producing a metal country's badly in need of. And it can thank you. Oh, I shall burst into tears. 
Well, I'm not embarrassed, but I have my say. Okay, Tom, can you take a word of advice? Well, I've been all over those old workings. They're in pretty bad shape. The timber's rotten. That's for hanging walls. Well, the first parties to go down are going to take a hell of a risk. Hmm, that's very interesting. But it's your headache, not mine. <sighs> I don't get you. Happened to check up on your mining record. Found you were a right good man and decided to give you a job. Oh, it did, eh? Aye, lad. And you've a man-sized task ahead of you. Oh, let me get this clear. Wait a minute. You mean you're asking me to reopen the Port Marin mine? Aye. I'm doing just that. I'm sorry, Tom. Thanks and all that. Kit, you can't be refusing. No, you wouldn't be so daft. Has it ever occurred to you, I might not want a man-sized task. I might prefer being free, doing the things I like to, grubbing about in the bowels of the earth. Wouldn't be danger, you don't fancy. Who does? So they were right in what they've all been saying about the... There's no guts. Good job lads and forces don't have same ideas. It'd be a bad lookout for all of us if they had. Mind your own blasted business. I still don't want your ruddy job. Find someone else. Ah, well, well and all. And in the meantime, I'll not let your regard for your health hold up production. I'll do job myself and be damned to you. It's quixotic, but foolish, Tom, at your age. Ah, well, I risk that. Okay. Come on, listen. When you do, go easy on the dynamite or you'll have the whole lot down on top of your heads. I don't forget, Tom. Keep those charges small. Kit, it's not... Oh, please, don't say it. And nobody Kit. cares for me. All right. Attractive as part of the country, don't you think? Yes, very. Why well, you don't exceed the speed limit, miss? How many miles does it do to the gallon? Kit, please hmm? stop. No good, Kit. I, I can't go on. The Miller of D idea just doesn't work. I see. Well, you gonna make me get out and walk? I will if you like. Oh, Kit, don't. These cheap jokes after... after what we've just seen. Oh, I know we've promised not to intrude in each other's lives, but... but if there's any reason for living as you do, for for turning down this chance today of doing something worthwhile, something for the war, then... then for heaven's sake, Kit, tell me. Or is there nothing to tell? No, nothing. Then let me know this, at least. Is it really that you're a... a coward, that you're... frightened of getting hurt, of... dying? Now, look here. I've told you the kind of bloke I am. I believe in enjoying myself. I think that's what we were put in the world for. Do you really mean that? Yes. Yes, I really mean that. I can understand you being afraid. Everyone's afraid of dying, but... But not to care, to be so utterly selfish. To be, in fact, like our old friend the Miller of Dee. Not... It's no news to you, is it? No. I suppose in my heart, I didn't believe you really meant it. Until now. Well, it all seems to feel a great big misunderstanding, isn't it? Bye, right, Lisa. I'm... I'm going back to the hotel. Can I drop you anywhere? No, no, no it's all right. Oh, I'll grab these sandwiches. You won't want them if you're eating at the hotel. Well, cheerio. I'll see you around sometime, I expect. Bye. and the boatswain being awake, and toss them to this place. And presently, I prithee. 
I drink the air before me and return, or ere your pulse twice beat. Sally, it wouldn't be a bad idea if you wore a practice costume and flat heels. Where do I get the coupon? All right, will you try the next scene? I'll be back in a minute. How's the telephone going? I've been near finished them. Just got to put a call through the headquarters to test the line. Hi, Jerry! Come down and give me a hand. Well, don't take all day. Come on, hurry up. All right. Keep your shirt on. Well, what do you want? Oh, help me make a list of these. Okay. One tatty cape. An urgent need of delousing. Put it down as Prospero's magic robe. One pair of tights. Very hairy. I make even our Caliban look tough. You know, Judy, you're just about the most understanding female in the world. I bet you say that to all the girls. I suppose there's a woman living who wouldn't be saying, I told you so. Judy, remember when we were kids? How we used to sit on your scullery steps, blow soap bubbles? Yes. Sometimes no bubbles came at all, just a noise. And suddenly there'd be the most lovely thing floating in front of us. All colors of the rainbow. We'd stretch out our hands to grab it and... Nothing. You're getting a bit lyrical, aren't you? What's it all in aid of? Hmm? Oh, I don't know, and I tried to grab one. Nothing? Hmm. You'll get over it. You want to talk about her? No. <laughs> yes. See, Judy, she has everything I ever wanted in a woman. Warmth, honesty, loveliness. Life could have been so right. What happened? Well, she got sick of my act, that's all. You never told her, then? No. Kit, it had to end soon. It's better now than later. I be finished them now. Place be linked up with the outside work. Well, that's a relief anyway. I don't know. Telephone wires carry as much bad news as good. A pessimistic bloke. Don't know about that. Take now. I put a call through to the exchange to test the line. Do I hear wages be doubled or war be over? No. Disaster in Porth Merrion mine. Porth Merrion? Aye, big fall of rock. Some good lad strat. I told that goddamn fool to keep the charges small. <laughs> There you are, miss. I've been looking for you all over. There's your thermos. It's coffee. The chef was a bit stingy with the sugar, but I tipped a bit more in when he wasn't looking. Thank you, Albert. I only came in for my music, but I might have saved the time. Oh, miss, miss, you mustn't do a thing like that. Oh, come, please. Oh, good gracious. Wasn't it a good tune? No. Oh, what a pity. You can make a lot of money out of a good foxtrot. Yes, I believe you can. Goodbye, Albert, and thank you very much. Oh, thank you, miss. But don't you want to know what happened to your friends before you go? My friends? Yes, Mr. Tanner. What about Mr. Tanner? You mean to say you don't know? He's got himself trapped in the mine. Only saw him at breakfast. He had Albert, peppers and coffee. what happened? Well, I don't quite know, but it seems he took a party down the mine, and they started blasting and blinding, and the roof fell all on top of them. Well, is he still alive? Reckon there's a chance. Rescue party's down another working that runs alongside. Your Mr. Fur thinks they'll be able to act their way through. Mr. Fur? Yes, it was his idea. He's leaving the rescue party. Oh. Is there any news? Judy! Judy, what's happened? 
kid sent up a message to say he could hear the men tapping. That was more than an hour ago. <laughs> Where's the track? Lock. What are you doing? No, they still be trapped. Mr. Parth, too, I reckon. He blasted a way through to them. We're just reaching them and signaling us to follow when there were another fall. Between them and us, bigger than the first. Hundreds of tons are up. But what are you going to do? Get more tackle and try again. What about Mr. Firth? Reckon he'd be trapped with others if he'd be alive. <laughs> Still here. Aye, but that third fall in 15 minutes, and they get nearer every time. Yeah, well, I'm bored of this place. Let's get out. Let's have the plan of workings. It's on the pile of rock back yonder. I didn't stop to collect it. Mm. Oh, that's a pity. Well, I have to rely on my memory, that's all. Let's see. Mm hmm. Mm. Checks up. What's in the mind, lad? No, Tom. We're where I think we are. Just about this spot here. Only ten feet of wall separates us from a ventilation shaft. We can blast our way through and escape along the edge. Ah, and if we're not where you think we are, then there's an underwater level. Been flooded about twenty years. We'll get very wet. Inside and out. Hi. Mm. Oh, another snag, Tom. The longest steel for the drill I've got is a six-footer, and there's at least ten feet of rock to blast away here, so I shan't be able to keep the charges small. Ah, space is a bit confined, like for every charge. Mm. So it looks as if we'll either be drowned or blasted to death. Oh, that's about the size of it. Well, what do you say, lads? Shall we take chance of rescue parties reaching us, or do as he says? But we'll all be dead if our rescue party reaches us. I'd rather be drowned quick than hang about waiting for the air to give out on another fall of rock to fly. Let's me. take a chance and not wait till the end. Oh, I think you're right. Well, it's up to thee, lad. Go on, drill away. Okay. Good. Sorry, Tom, but there's one slight point we overlooked. Where? Well, what's that? Oh, that last fall of rock has probably busted the airline and the drill won't work. Hey, bang it over, will you? Okay. Oh, there it goes. Sold a bit, nice and quietly. Well, is there any chance? Fuse. Well, there it 
it is, boys. Get behind whatever you can and keep your fingers crossed. That means you too. Aye, right, I'll take cover. But before you fire that charge, I'd like to ask you a question. What's on your mind, Tom? Well, in a way, I'm almost glad this happened. If only to know that you're not Lily Livered Quitter, I thought you were. You'd no call to risk your own skin by coming down here, but you came. Yet when I offered you a job, you turned it down. Why? It don't make sense, lad. Well, if we're going to be killed, it won't do you any good to know. If we're not, I'd still rather you didn't know. Okay, Tom? All right, lad. And whatever happens, I'm sorry for what I said. Thanks, Tom. Come on, boys. This is it. his face through the hole which he just blasted and he said you silly old something or other <laughs> didn't I tell you to keep charges small still I'd like to know what's back of all this maybe he's in secret service you've been reading thrillers <laughs> no I I think he's just got an attitude towards life and he means to keep it against all comers even that takes courage what are you messing with here just mending something I tried to destroy. I'm still leaving here. Running away, lass? Yes. You see, this doesn't make any difference. Although I know he's not a coward, there's so much he stands for that I hate and resent. Are you going to tell him so? No. I'm just going to say I'm sorry for having doubted his courage. Well, and then take to your heels. Pass them as far as they'll carry me. you tell me? I couldn't. Pity, Lisa. I, I can't bear pity. I dread seeing that look coming into people's eyes. I dreaded seeing it in yours, worst of all. Oh, my darling. Oh, 
I love you. I love you when I was so cruel. You know I love you. I must have hurt you so badly. When? How did it happen? About a year ago. In the RAF. Near miss by a cannon shell. Near miss? Hmm. Blast. Does queer things. Well, something pressing on the optic nerve, and when it gets to a certain point. How long? About three months, at the most. I blamed you for not taking Tom's job. Yeah. And I didn't want to spend my last few months underground. But kids, they can't just sit back and watch you going blind. Can't something be done? I could have an operation. And why in heaven's name don't you? Well, I turned it down. What? No, I'm not raving, man. See, when I first knew about this, I decided I couldn't, I wouldn't take it. Well, that there was nothing left to live for. Then Judy turned up. She soon put a stop to all that. She knew what was in my mind. She never left me alone for a moment. Poor kid. She had a pretty rotten time. I wasn't the best of company, I'm afraid. Anyway, she made me promise that whatever happened, I wouldn't take that way out. I shall always thank her for that. John. Soon after that, I went and saw another doctor, one of the biggest brain men living. He told me he could operate, but warned me that my chances of coming through alive were about 100 to 1 against. I'd have thought you of all people would have taken the chance I would have. So would I. When I talked it over with Judy, she made me see it wasn't a chance at all. Just suicide. The very thing you promised her not to do. Don't think I wouldn't have given anything to have had it. But Judy showed me that every alibi I could find, every reason I could think of was just an excuse. An excuse to get out of fumbling my way about, being dependent on my friends, helped across the road by kindly strangers, and always in the dark. Dark. Sorry about that. Judy's a very thorough sort of person, isn't she? Well, now you see the Miller of D idea. Oh, it's true glory. It's, it doesn't make any difference, you know. I'm still going to walk out. No strings, no comeback. You're not going. Yes, I must. I got a lot of thinking to do. Well, couldn't you stay just a little longer? No, darling. There's something I want to work out for both of us. But, darling... Don't ask me what it is. And thank you for telling me. No. Don't stop me. I, I want to go. I must go now. Yes. Kit? Yes. Tell me, quick. He's going blind. Oh. So he's told you. Oh, why wake me? I can't do anything. You're going to. What do you mean? This operation. Have you ever backed a hundred to one chance? No. But they have come in, and I've got a hunch. Oh, that's not how good your hunches would be with Kit stretched out on a slab. Judy, he's eating his heart out. I've never seen a man so at war with himself. Every natural instinct is urging him to take this chance. And I'm urging him not to, is that it? Yes. Well, I'll go on doing it. I've got his promise and Kit doesn't break his word. You're in love with him. I thought we cleared all that up. I've known him all my life. I like him and... You love him. Yes. Yes, I love him, all right. I've watched him flirt and kiss and sleep his way through a dozen affairs. Listen to his heartthrobs, giving him advice. 
Because there's one way I could keep him, by being his friend. The girl who knew him too well to fall for him, who made no demand. It must have been hell. It was. All the time, I was only waiting till he needed me. Somewhere in my heart, I, I knew I couldn't love him so much, go through so much and never be wanted. And when this happened, I knew what it was all for. That at last, he was going to be mine. You'd like to have him. But you want him whole, no blemishes. Nothing so uncomfortable as blindness. Do you think I'd help you to get him? Do you think I'd be such a fool? Judy, you wouldn't let him go blind to keep him. Wouldn't I? I'd do anything to keep him. Anything in the world. But you wouldn't keep him. Can't you see that? Can you imagine Kit with all his love of life and beauty blind? Well, in six months he'd have drunk himself to death or flung himself over a cliff. I'll be there to see he doesn't. You're ruthless, aren't you? Well, so am I. If you don't let Kit have his chance, I'll take him from you. I mean it. I'll go to him now, tonight. Do what you say. If he has the operation and it succeeds, I'll go away. Right after the picture. He'll be yours. If you can get him. If he dies, you'll have killed him. I'll tell you what to say to him tomorrow. this immediate unpleasantness to all the wonderful things that lie ahead. You know what I mean. I won't talk about it now, but that's the sort I'm keeping in front of me. It is all right, isn't it? Kid! You would get as far away from the entrance as possible. Here you are. Huh? What's this? Food. I suppose it didn't occur to you there's no dining car on the train. Isn't you wonderful? Thinks of everything. Thank you, darling. You'll write to us. Hmm? Oh, sure. I'll send you a lovely view of the hospital. Mark my room at the cross. <laughs> Make it a circle. Oh, yes. I wish you'd let me come with you. Well, I'm sorry, my dear. You wouldn't get in. The free list's entirely suspended in that theater. Besides, you've got quite enough on hand with your own show. I expect to hear that you've got a smash hit on Thursday. They won't have done anything by then. No, no, they're going to keep me under observation for the first week. It sounds vaguely rude, doesn't it? <laughs> Be good. And have that red carpet rolled out to welcome me home. We'll be waiting. Right. Oh, goodbye, kid. Goodbye, Judy. Goodbye, kid. Goodbye, Lisa. See you soon. Hey, it don't seem none, none, none natural. Storms don't stop for human blog blog voices. Orders. Now you all ready? Oh, good luck, everybody. Good luck, good luck. Good luck. Good luck. All the best. Now don't forget that. Hey, Lizza. Phone call from London. Hello? Yes. This is Miss Campbell. What? When? But why? Oh. Oh, I, I see. I understand. Thank you for letting me know. 
It's being operated on. How? But the surgeon who's doing it's been posted overseas. It had to be today or never. If we ring back in half an hour, they'll let us know how it's gone. Half an hour, but... Leave it to me, Russ. I'll book call. Audience is waiting. Tom, I, I can't go on. Not yet. Not till I know. Aye, but they're getting fidgety. They won't wait that long. Don't you realize Kit's being operated on now? Maybe. Still hanging around phone won't help. Better be working. I can't. I can't. I can't. Come on, we can't stay here all night. I wouldn't sell out on the flight right. I want to go. I've never let an audience down in my life, but I can't. I just can't. Judy, don't. I feel just as badly about this as you do, but you know he would want you to go on. You keep out of this. If it wasn't for you, he'd be here. Not on that operating table. <laughs> well, don't worry, love. Reckon we'll just have to call show off. No, Tom. We won't do that. Ladies and gentlemen, owing to indisposition of Miss Judy Martin, show won't start for half an hour. But keep your seats, please. We have a special treat. Now, many of you know Miss Lizza Campbell, who has been staying down here. Well, it appears she's not Lizza Campbell at all, but Felicity Crichton, famous London pianist. She's stepped into breach and is going to play us her own latest composition. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Felicity Crichton. Keep the chin up, lass. Let him have it. You had the faith in the guts. I'd never have dared if you hadn't made me. It was just a bluff. I couldn't have done a thing. You see, I'm going to die. Lissa, it's true. Oh, Lissa. Well, isn't there a chance? Does Kit know? Are you going to tell him? I said I'd go away, didn't I? Yes. Only we could have had a few months together. 
Judy, would it make such a lot of difference to you, just a few months? I can't get things straight, Lisa. I'm trying to think of Kit. If he knew, he'd make you marry him. He'd be happy for a little while, and then... What? I don't know. He'd be miserable for years remembering me. Is that what you were going to say? It is, I know. It's true. Oh, Lisa. Isn't there anything else I can do? Anything else? No. It's all right. All right. Just leave me alone, that's all. Now, are we all right? We must look our best when we have visitors, mustn't we? Oh, yes, we must. Miss Campbell, come in. The patient's quite seeable. He's just had a good wash and put on some new pyjamas. So he's ready for anything. That's right, isn't it, Mr. Firth? Hmm? Oh, yes, that, that's right, nurse. Well, I'll leave you then. Don't get the patient overexcited. Oh, darling. Oh, I thought you were never coming. Hey, you, you look paler. Sit down in the face. You've been worrying. No, I haven't. I knew you'd come through. Hmm? Well, you won't find me staring at you like a maniac anymore. No need for precious memories now. I shall be seeing you for the rest of my life. Oh, darling. Kit, someone may come in. What? Uh, Nurse Nichols. I've been training her for days. What's it like here? Food's awful, I suppose. No, it's not too bad. You allowed to read yet? Uh -huh. Not, not too much, of course. Nothing wrong, is there? Of course not. Got you a couple of magazines and some cigarettes. Not the conventional grapes, there aren't any. Thanks. Yes, sir, you're like a stranger. Nonsense, Kit. Just because we haven't seen each other for a long time, that's all. Do you mind awfully if I don't stay long? I've got a tremendous amount to do, packing and... Packing? Yes, I'm, I'm going on tour, playing to the troops. It should be rather fun. North Africa, Gibraltar, and so on. And will you come back? Not for months. I don't know exactly. I came to say goodbye, really. Look, kid, I... I ought to go now. Yes, sir, what is it? For God's sake, I... I don't understand. Just what? that I have to go on this tour, and I'm madly busy, that's all. But I want you to marry me. Kit, don't ask me that. We made a bargain, remember? But we love each other. I know we do. I in Cornwall... We do love each other, don't we? We're not in Cornwall now. Don't let's spoil it. We always said no strings, no comebacks. But it's different now. It's not but... different with me. I spent too long down there, and now I've got to get on with my work. I'm sorry, Kit. I, I hope you won't feel bitter. I must go now. I'm late and, and the shop shut so early. Yes, it'd be a pity if the shops were closed. Give it us some jive, sister. 
What about Silver Fred's Among the Gold? No, pick me up, Daddy, eight times was he bar. What about the one my old man used to sing in the last war? Take us back to dear old Blighty. Yeah. I'm sure everybody listening at home will be very thrilled to hear the boys in the desert, somewhere in North Africa, singing this old, old favorite. and lads, this season at Open Air Theatre has been my first venture in show business, and maybe it's my last. No. But whether or no, it's been a great happy experience. And I'm only sorry that Judy and all of you are going back to London tomorrow, leaving Kit and me behind. Cut out the sub stuff, Tom. This is a party. Aye, ah, you're right there, lass. Well, here's good luck to all of us, wherever we may be. Good luck, Tom. Judy, is there... Oh, I'm busy, Kit. I've got to get some sandwiches. <laughs> and you better look after the guests. Judy, do you really want to go home tomorrow? Of course I do. I've been away from London too long as it is. Give me a light. Mm. It worked. it worked. Thank you. Did you remember the day you saw me off at the station? Yes. Well, I realized something then I hadn't thought of before. You mean that I was in love with you? Yes. Yeah. Well, I was pretty slow in the uptake, wasn't I? You were too busy being in love with Melissa. You still are, aren't you? I don't know. I don't think so. I can't go on being in love with a girl who's ditched you for a keyboard. Remember, she knew the keyboard first. <laughs> You're wonderful, Judy. You put everything in its proper perspective. Judy, why don't we get married? I know it isn't one of these desperate love things. We know each other too well for that. But, well, we're used to having each other around. I know this is a pretty shop soiled offer, but. If you will have me, I'll do my very best to make you happy. I'll have you, Kit. Mm -hmm. Hmm? Oh. Well, that's fine. Now, uh, uh, hadn't we better get back to the guests? I guess I suppose we better. You take these. Mm -hmm. Listen, everybody. Listen. I've got some news for you. Tell them, Kit. Uh. Well, uh, Judy and I are going to get married. <laughs> When's it going to happen? Well, I suppose I ought to congratulate you both. Wish us happiness, Tom. Well, of course, lass. I wish you all the happiness in the world. If you're going to marry, but this is a bit sudden like, isn't it? Sudden? I've known her since she was in our pram. Come on, Judy. Maybe some dance music from the other. That was grand. What do you want next? Uh, if you please, Miss Crichton, how about Beethoven's Sonata in G? I don't think there's time for that. Well, that's not dance music either. Come on, everybody, we get some more drink. Join the moonlight. Let's take a little walk, shall we? Well, you know what's in my mind. I can guess. You can't go on with Judy. Kit's in love with Liz, and you know it. He asked me to marry him. I know that. No, that's what's puzzling me. Did he tell Lee, lovely? 
Well, no. No, I thought not. You saw what happened when you heard Liz's voice on the radio. It was the unexpectedness of it, that's all. He's getting over her. I know he is. Well, maybe and maybe not. But moment, he's fooling herself that you can make a do of it, but you can't. We will. Tom, I can be everything to him. I'm part of him. His childhood. I'm not afraid. Nay, lass, his heart's tied up with Lizzie. And if he never sees her again, he's hers for life. That mayn't be very long. Eh? What's that? I shouldn't tell you this, Tom, but I want you to understand about us. Liz is dying. The doctors have given her less than a year. I'll not believe it. You'll have to tell him, Judy. Lad has right to think for herself. Besides, doctors may be wrong. I told my grandma when she was 17 she'd only three months. And she died when she was 86 from drinking too much port. I won't tell him. I can't. I thought there'd more sense, lass, trying to fool herself that road. You can't twist folks' lives just to suit the sun. And this is one time you're not going to have your own way. And you're not going to have yours. I've been fighting for Kit for years, and now he's mine, and I'm going to keep him. If you try to interfere, I'll... Are you going to tell him? No, you are. I'll not believe that anyone with eyes like my Ellie could cheat a dying lass of her happiness. I'm not going to lose it. What are you conspiring about, eh? Oh, I... I was just trying to persuade Tom to back the season again next summer. Huh? Is he coming across? He's an obstinate old devil. He expects too much. Judy's a bit obstinate herself. But reckon she'll come to my way of thinking. Never. Mm. Sounds a bit definite. Shall we go and dance? Do sit down and rest. I can't, Ray. I can't. Well, you better take your drops anyway. No, thank you. I don't want them. You oughtn't to be playing, really. I told you that. Do you think anything could stop me now? This is what I've worked for all my life, ever since I started to play. Miss Crichton. Oh. Hello, Elizabeth. I just popped in to wish you luck. Let's have a look at you. Hey. You look lovely. I brought you these. Thank you, Tom. They're beautiful. Fresh from Silly's. Thought they only grew cabbages there now. Hey. Sit down. When... When did you come up? Today. Then you've seen Kit. Is he well? Aye, he's right fit now. And happy? With Judy, I mean? What do you know about that? That they're getting married? Yes. Some kind friend from the hotel sent me a good luck wire and broke the news. I bet I know who that was, the old vulture. Kit didn't... He didn't give you a message for me, wishing me luck or anything? No. Perhaps he meant to, but I didn't see him before I left. <laughs> no. Come, come, lass. This won't do. You can't go on platform with swollen eyes. Tom. If only he'd sent me a word. One little word. Just to show that at least he doesn't hate me now. <laughs> I'm sorry to make a scene. Ready to sing? God bless you, lass. This is it, Lisa. Make your playing, tell them all you want to say.
Listen, listen. Keep out of this, please, kid. You can guess what I've got to say. I think so. You can't give him up now. Do you think I'd give him up, ever, if you were mine to give? He never has been mine. Least of all since you went away. Well, I tried to tell myself you were meaningless to him as time went on. In my heart, I knew I was lying. And now, tonight, what the hell? Goodbye, kid. And thanks for trying so hard. Now, just a minute. What's going on here? I don't know what you both think you're up to, but this concerns me too, you know. I didn't want to come here tonight, you know that. But since you made me, let's get one point quite straight. I asked you to marry me. You accepted, and nothing's happened to change that. Lissa made it quite plain how she felt about things when she walked out on me. She didn't walk out on you. She... Well, I don't understand. She'll tell you. Give me a light. This is it Judy, true. What? If I'd had a chance of keeping him, I'd seen you in hell first. I'll keep this for last. Judy. No, no, no. Darling, I keep on telling you, they can't be sure. Kit, it's no good starting something I can't finish. Giving you happiness for a little while and... and then... Oh, darling. Happiness such as we can have is worth grasping. Even if it's only for a day, an hour. If you can stand on the highest peak for one moment, you've had what most people strive in vain for all their lives. Kit, if only I could believe it. Darling, listen to me. You say you've only a few months. Well, how long has anyone in the world been? How long have I? A month? A year? Well, perhaps I'll get away with it altogether. And so may you. But we're all living dangerously. There isn't any certainty anymore. It's just today and the hope of tomorrow. Oh, darling. Please, let's, let's take all the happiness we can, while we can. Don't be afraid. All right, my darling. I won't be. I'll never be afraid anymore. 